Many people that are into taking supplements on a regular basis are very likely to have tried a fish oil at some point. Fish oil supplements have long been promoted to protect the heart and provide a wide array of health benefits. I've personally used many different fish oils for solid periods of time. I have even seen consumer reports finding fish oil to be the most popular supplement taken in America. Yes, even more popular than the almighty multivitamin. But are fish oil supplements really necessary? Are they actually beneficial? Are you taking one that is potentially harmful to your health? I'll be going over all this and everything else related to fish oils and omega fatty acids. Fish oils are one of the few accepted supplements by the mainstream health community. We constantly hear about the wonderful benefits of things like the Mediterranean diet. How people that live on this diet have such a low risk for cardiovascular disease and heart attacks. And I don't doubt that one bit. Omega-3 fatty acids have anti-inflammatory effects. EPA and DHA are crucial to our overall health. I think I've seen just about every chronic health condition under the sun linked to omega-3 deficiency. And while this is definitely helpful information to us, it's not quite as simple as we're led to believe. Many of the studies showing positive benefits of fish oil are just general comparison studies of very loosely regulated diets. First of all, those that live on a true Mediterranean diet are eating real foods, as opposed to those living off of boxed dinners and fast food. Of course the Mediterranean diet will show less occurrence of heart disease. Eating freshly caught fish instead of a McDonald's cheeseburger is obviously a healthier decision. But how about eating fish sticks instead of venison steaks? You see, it's not about the category of the food, but the processing of the foods that makes the real difference. So to assume fish is so much more healthy than red meat based off of the Mediterranean diet versus the standard American diet is quite short-sighted. But what about all the great things we hear about omega-3s? This is another misleading subject. Yes, omega-3 deficiency could lead to chronic inflammation. If you frequently consume oils high in omega-6 and barely get any omega-3s, you are going to have some problems. Omega-6 is a pro-inflammatory fatty acid, just as omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. But yet, they are both essential. We need healthy inflammatory responses to injury or infection and other things like that, but too much of either omega is also a problem. Here is a quick rundown of the fats. You have the three main types being saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. The difference between them is their chemical structure of bonds. Unsaturated fats are not saturated to the max with hydrogen molecules like saturated fats would be. And polyunsaturated fats contain carbon chains with two or more double bonds, monounsaturated with obviously just one double bond. Many foods contain two or even all three of these types of fats to different degrees. But the key problem here is that polyunsaturated fats are way more susceptible to oxidation than the others. They are chemically unstable. They're way more vulnerable to damage by heat, light, or oxygen. And this means they're far more likely to oxidize and go rancid. Constantly consuming these fats could lead to all sorts of chronic health problems like diabetes, obesity, heart disease, hypertension, dementia, autoimmune disorders, and much more. Oxidized fats cause unwanted inflammation. Polyunsaturated fats, also known as PUFAs, typically are consumed in the form of vegetable oils, and these are very high in omega-6. These would be the oils like canola, soybean, safflower, sunflower, flax, cottonseed, and rapeseed, just to name a few. They also can come from fish, seeds, and nuts. Some of these things are touted as being healthy, and they probably are in some respect when they are fresh. Most of the vegetables we eat have undergone many heat processes and have been exposed to oxygen. If you buy canola oil off the shelf at your grocery store, it's almost guaranteed to have chemically changed its structure to something that is now harmful to you. Maybe you're a big time restaurant person. Well, no matter how healthy you think you're eating at a restaurant, you're still consuming vegetable oils because virtually all restaurants cook with these oils instead of butter or other saturated fats. When a restaurant refers to something being butter on their menu, it is in fact not real butter, but some combination of vegetable oils and margarine. So if you regularly eat out, you are in fact destroying your health, no matter how healthy the foods you choose are. 
So that was kind of a long tangent on PUFAs, but it needs to be stated, because fish oils are no different. They too go rancid very easily. Have you ever gotten the fish burps from a fish oil supplement you've been taking? I have, and I was told it's normal or maybe that I'm not digesting them well. Yeah, well that was a huge lie. You get fish burps because the oils have gone rancid. And why wouldn't they? Just think about what these fish oils go through to become a supplement. They are most definitely exposed to heat, light, and oxygen. They sit on shelves for months or even years sometimes. By the time you purchase them, the oil is completely different from a freshly caught fish. And this isn't just me having some wild vendetta against fish oils or anything. Check out what Harvard Medical School has to say about fish oil. They have an article titled, Fish Oil, Friend or Foe? They say, the answer is more friend than foe, if the fish oil comes from food sources rather than supplements. And I 100% agree with that. If you're really concerned about not getting enough omega-3, there are many great ways to do so without consuming the damaged fish oil supplements. Fresh, wild-caught fish is the best source, and the best fish are mackerel and salmon. Other great foods would be things like oysters, spinach, and chia seeds. And you're even due to get a little bit of omega-3 from animal products in general. If you eat a lot of beef like you should, you aren't likely to get deficient in omegas in the first place. I'm not going to promote any particular fish oil product because regardless of how reputable or high quality the supplement is, we just can't predict how well preserved each bottle stays from manufacture date to purchase. In the end, the cons outweigh the pros with fish oil supplements. Plus, they just aren't worth the money. There are plenty of other great supplements you could be spending your money on while you consume your omegas from food sources. Please like this video if it was helpful to you and share it with your friends. And have a happy and healthy new year everyone.